know at one point of time, right, um, hip hop in the earlier days, when you went to see your favorite rappers or rapper at a show, they usually had on stage with them their DJs and their dancers, like the group Houdini. They were probably uh, one of the first rap groups to incorporate hip hop dancers in their shows. Big Daddy Kane would have DJ Mr. C, Scoop and Scrap Love on stage with him. Steezo and Fendi, I remember them? Steezo and Fendi danced for the group EPMD. They, uh, they was in the video, You Gots to Chill. But Heavy D and the Boys, man, which consisted of DJ producer Eddie F and dancers G Wiz and Trouble T Roy, they took it to another level. Now, see the difference, right? Was G Wiz and Trouble T Roy were actually part of the group, the boys of Heavy D and the Boys. They was actually part of the group. Them other dancers I named, they weren't really part of it, but they was actually part of a group. And everybody was trying to copy their dance moves. Everybody was trying to copy their clothing, fashion, their style, and everything. And to be honest, right, Heavy D, Heavy D had, he had the king title for a while. He was at the top. But when they lost Trouble T, when they lost Trouble T, Roy, man, the group was never the same. And things just was never the same after his death. Because, see, Trouble T. Roy played a very important role in the group. He was the one. Trouble T. Roy was the one that held the group together. And he was best friends with all of the members in the group. Everybody loved him, especially in Mount Vernon, where they all from. And they all met as little kids. I mean, Heavy D and Trouble T. first met back in elementary school. And G Wiz and Eddie F went to the same elementary school. And you know what's crazy? A lot of famous artists grew up with them too. Remember the group In Touch? They had the song Too Hype. They grew up with them. Jeff Red was there. Jeff Red had that song You Call and Told Me on the um the Strictly Business movie soundtrack. He's from there, producer Pete Rock. Uh that's Heavy D's cousin, CL Smooth. Singer Al B. Short, they all lived in the same neighborhood as well. And you can't forget about Pete Diddy. He was out there too. <laughs> Look, Pete Rock said, growing up, Trouble T-Roy was one of the greatest friends you could have because he always had your back and he would look out for you. And by the time they all went to high school, that's when they all linked up, the old Heavy D and the boys, because they linked up for music. Because see, Heavy D, he used to rap, Eddie F used to DJ, and G Wiz and Trouble T Roy would just dance all the time. But everybody got introduced to each other through Trouble T Roy. He was well known in the hood. But him and G Wiz, they was like Batman and Robin. Because see, even before they became Heavy D and the Boys, right? During that time, back in the day, G. Wiz, he ended up moving to D.C., but he didn't like it out there. So that's when he moved back to New York. And when he moved back to New York, he lived with Trouble T. Roy and they became even closer like brothers. And while in high school, that's when Heavy, Heavy ended up getting his record deal with Uptown Records, which made them the first sign act on the label and Andre Harrell who was the CEO of Uptown Records told Heb to find him some backup dancers to be on stage with him and that's how they became Heavy D and the boys because see look Andre Harrell right he was he was a fan of the group Houdini like I said earlier they used to have dancers on the stage with them and he was also a fan of Dougie Fresh because he liked how he had his crew with him, the Get Fresh crew. And Andre wanted the name at first. 
he wanted the name at first to be Heavy D and the Come Up Crew, but they didn't like it, so they came with the Heavy D and the Boys. Now with a record deal, Heavy and Trouble T ended up dropping out of school, but G Wiz and Eddie F stayed and graduated. And after that, right, that's when Heavy D put out Mr. Big Stuff and then the single Overweight Lover. And they released the album titled uh, Living Large, Psst, The Rest, History. I mean, look, Mr. Big Stuff was actually on Uptown's Kicking It compilation album first. And that's how Heavy really blew. That song took off off that Uptown's Kicking It compilation. But that Living Large album, man, that was a dope album. Let me tell you the song I love on that album. Don't You Know, produced by Teddy Rock. That's my junk right there, don't you know. Now look, plus they got the Nike. They had the Nike endorsement deal with the Nike brand, making them one of the first hip-hop artists to do deals like that, following in the footsteps of Run DMC with the Adidas thing. Look, the Living Large album, right, was certified gold when he released it, which led to them being on a the Fresh Fest tour and the Wipeout tour with the Fat Boys. So with all that success from that first album, the Living Large album, Uptown Records, Andre Harrell, they was ready for Heavy to start working on his second album. And by this time, everybody in the crew knew what their roles were and what position to play. Like Hev, right? Heavy, Heavy was the rapper slash businessman he basically he was everything he did it all dancing businessman rapper did all of that eddie f was the dj he started making beats he became a producer and he was the businessman too because i think heaven eddie f was like partners on the whole the whole group thing 50 50 and um eddie f was a straight <laughs> he was a genius man genius he kept everything in order and organized for the crew now g wiz g wiz was responsible for the fashion side of the game all the outfits the shoes what to wear that was his lane and trouble t roy was the one that kept everybody cool when things got out of hand or got wild he was the one you could talk to trouble t roy made sure that the group kept the chemistry going uh, like if somebody was mad or upset, he was the one that can straighten the problems out and you can listen to. He brought the energy and the funness to the crew and he ain't play either. He didn't play when it was time to get down. Now, for the second album, right? That's when Andre Harrell decided to bring in now legendary actress, dancer, Rosie Perez to help G Wiz and Trouble T-Roy with some new dance moves for Hev's new video, We Got Our Own Thing. Plus, he wanted her to go on tour with them also. And Rosie Perez at that time, she was up and coming, but she was fresh off the tour with the group The Boys. She did the choreography for all their videos at the time. Dial My Heart, My Lucky Charm, and all that. Those my joints right there too. So look, like I said, right, in 1990, man, Heavy D was on top of the world. When he dropped his second album, which was called Big Time, he took the game over. Man, the yellow, the black, white suits on that cover, the, that Big Time album was a classic. And it ended up going number one on the top R&B hip hop albums chart and it hit number 19 on the Billboard 200 becoming certified platinum. Now that album also won a Soul Train Music Award and an NAACP Image Award. Wow. I'm telling y'all man, that album changed the game. It changed the game and look, those was the days when we used to dance like crazy when those songs came on. Songs like We Got Our Own Thing, which was produced by Teddy Riley. Man, me and my cousin learned so many dance steps from G-Wiz and Trouble T-Roy in that video. 
and the fashion with the polka dot outfits come on man look the other songs on that album uh somebody for me that was my joint too uh, i remember seeing them on different world performing that back in the day i also love um girls the girls they love me i'm in the mood for love all that that album that was a crazy album man plus they had the nike endorsement deal and they was doing commercials i remember seeing them on the sprite commercials they had that that car accident commercial where uh, the buckle up your seatbelt commercial and everything heavy d and the boys were doing their thing and around that time that's when trouble t also had his daughter which made him even work harder because now he got a family to take care of now successful right around that time heavy d and the boys were on a 10 city tour called the sizzler summer tour with public enemy kid and play i think salt and pepper was there he was on there um digital underground and a few more acts tupac was there tupac was on there too because he was part of digital underground at that time and look him and trouble t roy became good friends on that tour them two became real good friends. Trouble T-Roy, man, everybody loved Trouble T-Roy. He can get along with anybody. But on July 14th, 1990, they had a show at the Market Square Arena in Indianapolis. And Heavy D and the Boys had just finished performing. And Public Enemy was now on stage performing. Now, see, Heavy, Heavy and everybody, right? on tour were always playing around and always joking a lot and all the acts all the acts on that tour was young though at that time and they like to have fun playing jokes on each other and everything public enemy was the oldest group on that tour so anyway right now as they're walking down the back exit ramp heading to the bus somebody in the entourage from either kid and play and salt and peppers camp ended up pushing like one of those small dumpster garbage cans with the wheels on it right and they pushed it down the ramp playing around and it was heading towards trouble t-roy and as he jumped to the side trying to get out of the way he ended up losing his balance on the ledge and fell two stories like 30 feet down on the hard concrete man mm, 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 mm. shaking my head man that's sad man terrible and look the crazy part is at first when he first fell nobody didn't think anything of it because it didn't feel like they were that high up because they thought he might have fallen maybe 10 feet or something like that but when they looked over the sea and saw how high they were up and saw Trouble T way down there on the ground, they was all in shock. All the joking stopped right there. And that's when everybody rushed down to help him. And they said he tried to get up, but he had like a big gash in his head when he hit the ground and he was rushed to the hospital. But the next day, he died from serious head injuries upon impact. Man, that is sad, man. It's terrible, man. You know what? For years, man, growing up, because I heard the story when I was young, I always thought he fell off the stage. That's the story I always heard. But uh, DJ Eddie F, he was there, and he described the whole incident in a Double XL interview. And he said, this is what he said, right? He said, you know how coliseums or convention centers have like the exit ramps that actually go around the arena and eventually go down to the ground level right he said now where they were at there was just one of those ramps and it was elevated in the arena and when you came out of the arena you really had no perspective that you were two or three stories up in the air it just felt like you was coming out of a regular stage like a school or something and the grounds right there so 
what happened was everybody was just playing around and somebody either rolled a garbage can and Troy had jumped up on the side of a little concrete barrier. He said, you know how you jump up and you kind of move your legs to the side so whatever won't hit you and you kind of support yourself, but you're really on that little wall and kind of supporting with your hands. And he was like, you know what it was, right? That troubled T-Roy lost his balance and fell over the side. But when he first fell, nobody didn't think anything of it because it didn't feel like you were that high up. That's what DJ Eddie F said in the Double XL magazine interview. And it's just a very unfortunate situation, man, for him to die like that, man. Sad, man. And you know, everybody took his death hard, man. Everybody took his death real hard. It was rough on a lot of people, even the fans, man. Like I said, I remember this, man. And you know what? They say Tupac took his death real hard. Said Tupac was crying like crazy and started punching holes in the walls. According to Kid from the group Kid and Play and the manager of Digital Underground, they told that same story. And you know, like I said earlier, man, Public Enemy was on that tour and Chuck D at that time, he was like 10 years older than everybody. And he said after Trouble T-Roy died, he had to be the big brother telling everybody on tour to stop horse playing and joking so much because things like that can happen, man. Heavy D and G-Wiz, man, they was devastated, man. They didn't even go to the funeral, man. That's how hurtful losing him was to them. And, you know, after that, a year later, on July 2nd, 1991, Heavy D released his third album titled Peaceful Journey, which was dedicated to Trouble T-Roy. And then another great hip-hop group emerged around that time called Pete Rock and CL Smooth. And they released one of my favorite songs of all time, also called Troy, They Reminisce Over You, dedicated to Trouble T-Roy. And that song, that song hit number one on the Hot Rap Tracks chart in 1992. Now, Pete Rock said when he was mixing the song down, Charlie Brown from the leaders of the new school was in the session with him. And the song was so emotional that they both just started crying, man. Man, it was rough, man. That sample, though, that sample with the horns, man, that came from a song called Today by Tom Scott. And Pete Rock also said when he first heard that song, Today by Tom Scott, that song made him cry, too, because at the time, he was feeling depressed over what had happened to Trouble T-Roy. Wow, man. It's crazy, man. And C.L. Smooth, right? He put that line in his verse. T to the R to the O to the Y. How did you and I meet in front of Big Lou's fighting in the street? But only you saw what took many time to see. I dedicate this to you for believing in me. That line right there. Now... That was a real line because him and Trouble T-Roy had serious beef that ended up coming to blows. They had gotten a fist fight over a girl. They had some serious beef. Now, the story goes about that fight they had, right? Now, see, C.L. Smooth's cousin was dating Trouble T-Roy's girlfriend's cousin. And I guess they was all over at the house chilling together. And Trouble T-Roy thought C.L. Smooth was trying to talk to his girl. So he confronted him and they talked it out, which led to C.L. Smooth thinking that everything was all good. And there wasn't any beef because he told him he, he wasn't trying to holler at his girl. Next thing you know, Trouble T-Roy came back with some of his boys and they jumped C.L. Smooth pretty bad. I heard they beat him up pretty bad. And then they let him, and then they ended up fighting one on one. Once CL got himself together after they jumped him, they ended up fighting in the street one on one. And and CL Smooth said he was getting trouble T Roy, but then his brother 
Trouble T. Roy's brother jumped in and punched him in the back of the head. And that's when CL Smooth's boy told Trouble T. Roy's brother, don't jump in. Let him fight one on one. So then Trouble T. Roy's brother jumped in again. And that's when one of CL Smooth's boys jumped in and knocked Trouble T. Roy's brother out to the point that he was actually in a coma. Wow. Put, the, put him in a coma. And that's when the fight and that's when the fight was over. And things got scary because Trouble T. Roy's brother was in a coma, according to CL Smooth. Now CL Smooth talked about that situation in an interview that's on YouTube. Y'all can check out. But on the positive side though, right? Heavy D was the one who squashed CL Smooth and Trouble T. Roy's beef because he have have, have loved everybody. He loved both of them. He loved CL Smooth and he loved Trouble T. Roy. He said they like brothers. And when he squashed the beef, Trouble T and CL Smooth became real good friends after that, like brothers almost. And he dedicated the song, They Reminisce Over You, to him when he passed. Overall, though, after losing Trouble T. Roy, Heavy D and the boys was just, it was just never the same, man. Even though they did have success with the other albums they put out after his death, like Peaceful Journey, Blue Funk, and Nothing But Love, which all went platinum. But, you know, not having Trouble T. Roy on stage with them dancing, you know, laughing and having a good time. It just wasn't the same, you know? I can imagine though, man, because they all been knowing each other ever since elementary school. It's sad, man. But this is what I want to say though, right? I got to say this because Heavy D and the boys played a big part of my life growing up. From the haircut styles, the earring in the ear, dressing fly in the colorful suits with the black dress shoes, with the silver tip in the front, Man, what was my shoes called? I can't think of them shoes right now. But you know, the polka dot outfits with the tie on, doing that jump dance step they used to do. Man, they had a big influence on me growing up, man. I'll tell you, man. Trouble T-Roy and Heavy D will truly be missed. Trouble T-Roy was only 22 years old. Rest in peace to that brother, man. Troy Trouble T. Roy Dixon.